Yeah, thank you, Cecil. I joined there. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. <clears throat> All right. So thank you for every, everyone for getting to the session today. Uh, API Days is a great conference in this space, I hope. Uh, to bring some uh, fun in action today. So moving forward, uh, open banking has become a global phenomenon from the marketing perspective. And for the technology community, APIs, microservices, containers, and DevOps are already in, right? So a survey by Tink in the last year has found that close to half of the banks the exact number is 41%, failed to meet the deadline for PSC2 to provide the test environment or sandbox for any third party, third party service provider. And in addition to this, the CMA was forced to reprimand for dragging their heels over the delivery of open banking functionality within their mobile apps. Uh, so what constitutes constitutes uh, cloud native is still way too advanced for most institutions and vendors platform. Uh, and what is behind your API is really, really what matters. So finding a way to quick start experimenting with developers of your digital ecosystem in a sandbox environment is crucial. And software architect architecture becomes are very important inputs to into continually executing and refining your open banking strategy through APIs. So I'll cover today, uh, talk very briefly about the open bank sandbox solution uh, by Red Hat. Uh, then I will jump into the landscape of cloud native uh, and, and common scenarios found for APIs on open bank implementations around the globe before getting 
into action to showcase such a test environment uh, that can, anyone can bootstrap very quickly connecting with the cloud native demo application. So my name is Rafael Marins. I'm a Red Hatter and I work for a global financial service guiding the technical agenda in the product marketing team. So my, some quick intro about me, I'm Brazilian uh, and actually I live in Rio de Janeiro. I got engaged with open source and Java community 70 years ago, 17, uh, and I have been in, the, in, in a Linux user uh, since 1996. So when not working and with my family, I enjoy windsurfing, electronic games, and watching uh, my favorite football team. Last year, uh, back in, in November at API Days London, uh, we presented another workshop, uh, Red Hat Open Bank Sandbox, why we have built and how can you use it. It was initially a service provided at Red Hat developers website, but the way it, it's a go to site for everybody, every, every developer to get fast and speed and a catalog, a catalog of APIs was provided then. So you could register as a user uh, as a developer to get a user key to place API calls for, for this website. But behind this service, there was a comprehensive technology stack to provide, uh, to provide uh, identity access management, fine tunnel authentication, uh, more than implementing our API gateway pattern indeed a full API lifecycle management, multiple runtimes to develop your endpoint and connect to internal bank systems and all that sitting on a multi cloud container management platform. So what is new is the new is we have packaged this open bank sandbox with automated provisioning and make it publicly available as open source solution. So for the full Lifecycle API management, full lifecycle API management is the basis of uh, effective uh, API strategy. And API lifecycle management is a term illustrating the need to manage all the steps in the life of API from cre creation to, to retirement. So Red Hat advocates uh, for the, the, the API contract first approach, and this is uh, this involves consulting, consulting uh, data with, stakeholder, with stakeholders to collaborate in the design uh, of an API before determining and developing various channels and applications that will use the API. Uh, one of the benefits of this approach is that organizations get valuable feedback in the early stage of design, which really helps uh, with developing the service that delivers the value to the to an API eventual consumer. So the stage of the API lifecycle moving forward, planning and designing the API, uh, API, the testing uh, the API, uh, implementing the API, deploying, and then uh, having the API control layer, uh, developing API consumption, to put the APIs into a catalog that is published to the API developer portal, uh, providing some analytics. And most of the time, the APIs are offered to, for free because they represent a new way of making business. But in some cases, companies might want to monetize their APIs, right? So that's why companies will track the utilization of the APIs and apply rate plans and policy to generate API revenue. Uh, and, and the discover, develop, and so on. So this is uh, uh, how we we consider uh, the full API life cycle as part of the solution. And then uh, we put together a uh, reference architecture for a conceptual reference architecture for uh, Open Bank Sandbox uh, solution at Red Hat. And this is really where containers simplify the application Simplify application and API deployment, deployment uh, and portability across platforms. This 
uh, eliminates the need to refactor services to launch them on different infrastructure and make your environment more efficient. So in this open banking platform, Red Hat OpenShift serves as the underlying container application platform. And Red Hat TreeScale uh, API management fuse and single, Red Hat Single Saigon and Red Hat OpenShift application runtimes all run in containers within Red Hat OpenShift. So basically, for uh, moving forward to, to what uh, we consider as cloud native up, uh, uh, approach uh, workloads that uh, is really uh, developed for the reality of, of movie, movie, high, open hybrid cloud environment. So basically, for really uh, 50 years, mankind wrote, up, wrote applications in some variant of monolith architecture, including me and probably many of you, whether it was client servers. Uh, mainframe three-tier pipeline processing or something else. We had services that did different jobs but were similar to each other in terms of environment and language. Uh, and they, they often uh, share a common business tier and common data format. So in the last 10 years, we moved to a new model with cloud native microservices. And these were services are developed by a smaller accused team with minimal dependencies between the teams and the proverbial of two pizza teams, this really applicable. And this approach emphasizes framework, sprint, hybrid cloud deployment, continuous integration, and many other innovations that weren't relevant or available to monolith developers. So new development practice requires new mental models in our mental model uh, in, uh, at Red Hat, uh, we address Microsoft architecture from four aspects. APIs, it is clear uh, that well-defined API contracts, uh, the best approach for synchronous application level interaction between services and with the outside world, uh, CQRS, uh, I mean, the common query responsibility segregation, uh, but also events uh, which represents a multiple state or value of a particular entity which occurs during operation among services. And the data, uh, it's another asset, as each microservice own uh, its own data model, there has to be a strategy for visualizing the that, that data in a manner that uh, allows query and update from other services and from the, for the outside world with uh, strong security considerations around it, right? And enterprise integration patterns, uh, business logic often requires multi-step processing uh, with routing and transformation across services. And that's where the enterprise integration patterns come in. So looking at the journey of how applications have been designed and deployed can help us understand why serverless has become a top a topic of discussion nowadays and in the in the move of the cloud natives the objective of being portable drives decisions the smaller the code base the more portable and scalable each process can become the drive towards function as a service be the smallest and the lightest um, amount of code to ship is really uh, the nirvana uh, for for this model. So, when we look into the lens for the landscape of many open banking uh, deployment scenarios, uh, we really uh, see a um, mix of different environments and technologies. So, not not all. APIs and workloads that support the open banking solutions are cloud native and they need to uh, deal with the legacy based APIs with some uh, integration help and also the anti corruption layer around the business domain, but also uh, the intermediary level where the integration, uh, we start to bring some 
uh, existing application, decomposing this application into uh, uh, small pieces and putting into containers, and then moving to a service ne mesh uh, and cloud native application. So uh, before going to 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 cloud native today, today cloud native or modern applications share some basic principles. Uh, they are distributed in nature, ideally designed to run anywhere to boot cloud and ready to scale on demand. The scale of these applications happens uh, based on events, right? So HTTP requests and more complex event systems like Kafka or third party systems like Salesforce, AWS, S3, uh, and so on. So every, everything has APIs and is connected to the world. Uh, your applications will eventually be exposed as API and, or have to talk to other systems using API. With most cloud native applications, you will, will uh, end up calling services using their APIs or build and build uh, services of your own. So modern applications are designed to be disposable. They can start and stop due to failures or not gracefully or and, and and without really impacting the whole system right so this is the this structure is uh, helps you to build more robust robust systems handling unexpected events and and today most most companies uh, are polyglot uh, in terms of development and, and and expertise and a platform that support developer workflows for multiple programming languages without snowflakes uh, no special treatment for a given language or framework. Consistency is key to, to the scalability around this. So, and, and security uh, is a common cross-cutting concern, but given the scale most systems run today and with automation in place, it's a paramount requirement and must be default to out of box, right? So. Uh, this is the the, the cloud native definition uh, from CNCF uh, uh, that that we we bring just to uh, not read this but uh, just to give you uh, some alignment that we have we have with this definition in interpreting this and and then come comes Quarkus and Quark is a tiny particle, uh, as you might know, that makes up protons and neutrons. So Quarkus is a Red Hat framework and the Kubernetes, Kubernetes native Java framework tailored for Graal VM and Mandil VM uh, and, and Hotspot, uh, crafted from best of breed Java libraries and standards. And the goal of Quarkus is really to make Java the leading runtime in the Kubernetes and the serverless environments by offering developers unified and reactive, uh, unified reactive and imperative uh, programming models to optimally address a wide range of distributed application architectures. So uh, this is how we we see today uh, the the coverage of, of the evolution of application architectures and where Quarkus fits in, uh, coming to from breaking down the monolith into cloud native and microservices, and also being enabled the serverless for event-driven architecture. And Quarkus native uh, binaries are extremely resource efficient. So it's starting up fast and taking up very little memory. This makes it very well suited to many use where traditional Java applications have struggled, such as serverless and even driven environments or application where process isolation and density are super important, like scalable microservice architectures. So I'll show after uh, how fast Quarkus, uh, simple Quarkus application can boot up uh, and, and you see that 
So uh, Quarkus precompiles and package our application as a native binary. And in this case, for, a lin for Linux, it, as you can see, right, uh, as binary standard uh, for containers, run platform for image, con container image, it makes it ready to assemble into a container image that is mutable through how your CI CD pipeline and multiple environments, and you can run, you can just run it like any other command. So Red Hat's making a version of its Quarkus runtime for deploying Java applications on Kubernetes that doesn't require Java virtual machines. Quarkus start, start up uh, really extremely fast, as I mentioned, thanks to, to the pre-work done during the, the compilation eliminating the dead code and it results in a very small memory footprint. Right, so this is the process I just described it, uh, where the, the dead code and the comp during the compilation, it brings the, the binary into a small uh, size and footprint requirement. So let's see this in action. So uh, before going to the demo, I want to bring more uh, details into this. Uh, this is the, at large, this is the, the, the architecture uh, view of the, the deployment environment I, I will show to you. Uh, it's really uh, running the API management layer and, and Red Hat to scale on top of OpenShift as a con container platform. And the gateway are deployed into this test environment as well as an in independent uh, runtime for uh, running a container. Uh, and we also have a de developer portal uh, capability available in the backend admin portal for admitting uh, users uh, having a, a perspective of, of the dashboard management of the application key and, and so on. So all the capabilities that we, we provide us out of box for, for the admin portal. And uh, we'll show during the demo is really getting a developer application and place the request to available APIs but the trick is that uh, in the initial version of the open bank sandbox, we get we get all the UK standard API for open banking, uh, the read only, and provided the implementation using mock data. And behind the scene, uh, the endpoint that's called to respond is a, a micro rocks endpoint providing the, the testing data uh, to respond to that call. And when we are moving to to this cloud native, we bring something, we brought something new, which is really providing a statement API developed using Quarkus and deploying this on open, deploy that on OpenShift. And we're gonna see is how to configure this API into the into into on three scale. Uh, another uh, so uh, for this scenario, we are going to see the transaction microservices that you see on the right. Uh, we did some work recently, uh, and uh, on the, our demo code, we brought a Java old Java application architecture into microservices and we are bringing these capabilities to this example. So uh, let, let's go and take a look on, on, on that. So this is the, my, um, the cluster I'm running. Uh, the developer portal, it's, a, it's a, I'm running uh, our inter internal uh, System uh, a cluster in my in my internal system that red 
and the developer portal really uh, is pretty simple for the initial use case of the sandbox where it allows to rest a new user to explore the catalog uh, and, and, and play some requests. So I, what I do is to uh, rest a new user uh, for me and and use yeah got it so the next what i need is to 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 get logged in right so uh before that i need to go as a new rest user uh this user is is listed on on the twistgrail admin portal and I need to activate this user in this normal, in the, in the traditional flow, this user uh, gets the email to validate their, their, their email address. And once they click on this link, he is this user is automatically uh, activated. Uh, since I don't want to go to, to the email, uh, I'll come into this and activate my, my user as uh, with the administrative role. So this is really where uh, all my API endpoints are, 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 are kept. So it's initially what you see here is the three scale uh, the main portal uh, and there are many and different capabilities. The main feature here is to show uh, the, a list of the existing APIs that are deployed. And this is where you can see six APIs as, as API product that's allowed to, for me now to use. And if I come to some of these uh, ATM locator, for instance, I'll get an overview of this API and uh, it's assigned for a free tier application uh, where my user can, can uh, place request. This is that that's limited to uh, 10, 10 requests per, per per second, I think, very well, well. And this is the the beauty of this is that all this in, environment and the deployment of these these APIs were automated. So by the end of this presentation, I'll provide you with the link where you can uh, check out the the, the automation code for deploying this API. So the moving next, uh, I have the, the active doc documentation. So it's also loaded with the API specification for the ATM, uh, API, ATM locator. Uh, I can look into the integration with the backend. So, uh, here, here is the product endpoint for calling the ATM API. And when I place this call, it will redirect the request uh, for the backend API. So uh, I have the metrics and methods configured for API. It helps me also to create specific policies, securities and configurations, but also to get the analytics and study status for for this API. Uh, map, mapping policies. So I you see here uh, I have basically two uh, policies in, uh, configured. One of them is cores to enable cross site uh, request, right? And In the develop the developer content, uh, developer portal content, uh, it also provides some configuration, and it allows you to to manage uh, on how to list out. For instance, uh, you can change layout uh, or the content of the API catalog. So now that the user is activated, I will come back to this and get into lo in, to to log in.
here you go. So now I can explore the API catalog. And then this is really uh, the preloaded and pre-configured pre API catalog we, we get available. So it's really showing is uh, all the APIs preloaded in, into this sandbox environment. And uh, we have some standard configurations and conventions to load this. So using using the the uh, the de as deployment artifacts using CRDs, Kubernetes resource uh, custom resource definition files to deploy the API backend and API products and link both together with application uh, configurations to uh, allow you to use. Uh, so exploring the ATM locator. Uh, I will get on as I'm logged in. I get my uh, user I, user key, and now I should be able to try out this with my user key. Yeah. So as I'm using. Self signage certificate. I need to to get to this endpoint. And allowed configuration. Yeah. Right now that I, I accepted the, the, I gave the permission to the uh, Firefox browser to to execute uh, to run this to reach out this uh, endpoint uh, and 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 I can execute and now I should be able to to get the result. Let me try this one. So I will do the same. First, I need to place a new or to copy this user key, provide the user key. And then place a request. Initially, it's going to fail. I'll create a new OSS this URL uh, endpoint directly to uh, give permission. Uh, and now I should be able to place the call. Let's see this. Yeah, so here is the response body. Uh, it's coming to the a to to the API gateway as it's published and redirected to the to the endpoint. So we, when we see the personal load. The personal Personal current account. So when I'm getting to the personal current account, I'll be able to uh, see in the configuration uh, the backend endpoint. This backpoint, this endpoint is protected, so it's accessible by the gateway. And this is the external URL I am accessing, and also the API sandbox is reaching out. So moving next, 
uh, I'm logging into the micro rocks and show you how this how we have got into this configuration. Right. So this is this is the micro rocks is uh, a, a mock. A server runtime where I can configure multiple collections of test, test data for for simulating uh, API calls, and I can also do some logic internally into these collections using uh, Postman collections, and then import into into Microrocks. So as part of the sandbox deployment, this is also automatically uh, imported to MicroRocks, they preloaded with the APIs. And I you see the same six APIs configured and preloaded into the tree scale will have equivalent back backend uh, available here. So the personal current account, uh, I have one method and this method will return the different products for our personal grant account uh, offers so and, and complying to the UK standard uh, APIs for personal personal grant account and now I should be able to to see uh, as I did some some I generate some traffic right so I should be able to see the the invocation here on the analytics. It's not a game. Yeah, there is some, that it was fun. Yeah, maybe to low hourly average. Yeah, here you go. So yeah, there is this, it's very simple, but uh, here you can see the number, the number of hits per uh, top applications and and, and general perspective uh, of the API applications uh, for different methods you have. So now back to 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 so I did this the login to the developer portal walk through this uh, execute the place the request using the developer portal uh, to the personal current account endpoint. Uh, we can do the same using core as a command line. So I can just get it to this and so here is the same result I get uh, using curl uh, also made it generated any point and and I have shown you as well the available APIs the product and backends the develop portal the active docs and now I want to show you how the open accelerators the Red Hat repository for the open bank sandbox and this is where the CRDs are, are are using so are used and lo loaded from here into the sandbox during the provision so the beauty is that uh, uh, this is a concept uh, for the tree scale operator running on on openshift so uh, I have two kind of custom resource for uh, tree scale API so there is the product API custom resource and the back end and both should be matched to the to some tenant 
which is an instance of tree scale. And this tenant has a configuration of the URL and the access token, a secret inside OpenShift deployment to, 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 to communicate with the tree scale backend and, and, and deploy this automatically. So this is the tree scale operator uh page and you can also check out here on the Trisk operate github uh a full custom resource definition first file so all the attributes and configurations are provided here and this is where it comes so we use it to create a product in the back end for a personal current account so this is how the product gets configured uh, So into this file, I have some template variables that are replaced during the provisioning. But the, the whole idea is to configure and providing some metadata that is loaded. So this is the same description you see on the catalog. Sorry. So you see here, it's the same description we get into. Uh, I'm configuring the authentication method. Uh, I'm using simply uh, user key uh, attribute and, and to the header, but I can also provide uh, OAuth and uh, OpenID Connect security integrated with Red Hat SSO uh, as part of the sandbox. Uh, the backend, with the path where this is configured, the application plan, uh, the methods, uh, so the amount, so I, I, the, the limit is one request per second. Actually, it's, uh, it's computed uh, 60 requests per minute. So uh, it's the rate limit that the three tier allows to use and the method configuration so I can get specific uh, analysis information from there. And looking back to the back end, the back end CRD is much simpler. Uh, it's where it matched to, with the product personal current account by the means of the provider account ref, which is listed here. And uh, in there, into the product product uh, product API, there is a reference to the system name, so they can match each other. And I'm pointing the private URL, which is the actual endpoint or the ingress controller inside Kubernetes where the, your workload will be uh, running and responding to. So uh, another feature is that uh, for the developer portal, uh, the, the, the specifications are loaded into this, this folder, uh, the, the Swagger files. Uh, the test data collections are defined here. You can use it this with uh, Postman to load these data collections and modify as, as your will. And the developer portal, uh, there are different resources. So there are page, layout, JavaScript, web font, image, CSS. So you can uh, configure it externally and then load and all the magic has to happen into the agnostic revisioning that is part of Red Hat product demo system. Uh, but you can also run to deploy this into your local OpenShift environment. So I'm using the same script to run with uh, containers, con con with code red containers, my local OpenShift instance for development but also to point out to provision a new OpenShift cluster from scratch 
into a public cloud service uh, like Google, Azure, uh, AWS, or also pointing out to OpenStack install uh, and make this provisioning from for the whole uh, whole environment. So, I, what I want to show from here is how this specification of these API endpoints and the mock data are all pre-configured using this, uh, this conf configuration file for, for the Ansible, uh, this Ansible role that uh, for the Open Bank Sandbox. So this is the way I load also to create the sections, uh, layout, and load some resource files and create the page on the develop portal without needing to do it manually. So it's also a way you can not only create the sandbox, but also promote across multiple environments the chance you need for for your uh, for your API or developer portal. So uh, now we see uh, what we're gonna see is uh, the transaction. The transact transaction uh, application. So really, transaction application, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm, I'm currently in this directory. I'm running the transaction using uh, Quarkus on my local environment, but also de deployed on OpenShift. So when I do local, keep that load faster. So when I use Quarkus local, you see uh, how fast it's used to load Quarkus application, which is with embedded database in memory, uh, load data into this database, and it it carries really fast uh, fast load. So as you see here. Uh, it loads in three seconds, uh, three and almost four seconds, but you can get rate, different rates. So sometimes it loads uh, for me at two seconds or uh, uh, in between these. Oh, and I guess I can get to this endpoint and show this running on my local environment. Yeah, this is very basic application that I'm running on my local. And what I can do from here is to list out transactions for a specific account and get the balance, which are some methods uh, for the UK statement API so to get a balance and also get a statement for uh, a specific month for this account, I did some error. Yeah, some typo. Yeah, so I'm listing all the transactions in the in November 2019 uh, from for this API, and I will do the same uh, on on OpenShift. So on OpenShift, I have <coughs> the same transaction application using Parkus uh, running and and plug it using configured with a post first degree uh, database, right? And and the Quarkus deployment. So I can check really quickly. Uh, I will open a URL, it's running. Uh, and I get, when I get into this pod, I can have a clear vision, sorry. I'll create a new pod. So I'm deleting this new one and it will get created on the OpenShift. Uh, you can see here. 
actually the, the, the new container running. Yeah, it's running. And start to see it came out very quickly. And the run. It's not showing this uh, because uh, maybe I loaded too fast. I have not collected yet, but it'll come up with uh, the transactions. And uh, what what we're going to do is to add this uh, new API into the tree scale backend using the operator. So when I go into OpenShift operators configuration, I can get a view uh, uh, of all OpenShift all to scale instance I have, I have available. So I, can, I as a container boot, boot, boot cloud container environment, I can create a multiple instance of the API backend, uh, API instance, API manager instance. And also I have my APIs configured uh, using custom resource files and the tree scale uh, backend configuration. So we're gonna see now is getting this configuration for the statement API. I have pre-configured the private endpoint for this API. And what, what you're gonna do is to cop and create a new file using OpenShift. So the backend statement API is loaded now. can see here is synchronized and next I need to configure the product API for the statement and I will do the same import a YAML file on OpenShift cluster I have a demand permission and 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 We can now check uh, how it gets sync. So, yeah, it's a red sync. So let's look, look back now to the tree scale. available APIs on three scale and I can I need to locate here the account statements API so it's now pre-configured I can get this overview and there is an issue on the configuration because there is no user assigned to this API so on the new user is that it uh, I, I did some configuration to include on this new account all the existing uh, or the, the uh, related account plans uh, as I have just created a new as I just created a new uh, API configuration now I need to create the subscription for this user so uh, our marine statement yeah so here is the my api credential for the user key and now i should be you should be able to place a request and get the response back Right, so I can do this from the command line, but we're going to we will we'll see this happening using Postman. So with Postman, I have pre-configured 
endpoints for, for now I have 18 minutes left to just chat it very quickly. So I will list the transactions for the account. 5006 using the, the transaction microservice endpoint, not the API gateway, and uh, get balance for this same account, and also get the transactions for uh, November 19. So they're all working. And we're gonna see now if we we'll replace and now use the API and API gateway endpoint URL instead. So I'll create a new and transactions. So you see a mapping difference. Uh, there is no service. Uh, path uh, on the same uh, on the API gate request endpoint. So it will give a error now when I request because send this request because uh, it's missing the authentication parameter. So let's go back and get it. This authentication parameter I will include the user key. as a header and now it should work yeah so get there so the account account statement now is listing i can do similar request to get balance you see and it's working and also substitute by statement so 2019 Let's get now the month of October. Yeah, get there. So I now we can see on the JSON response the multiple API requests and um, the, the multiple transactions for this account on October 19. So this is uh now let's go back to, to complete and wrap up this conversation. Uh we have talked about many and multiple different benefits of Quarkus. Uh, it's really small and thin footprint for creating uh, a REST crude into an environment that was using JVM, but when you use Quarkus native, you get impressive results on the Quarkus and Graal VM, so that's bootstrap, uh, boot time and also uh, strong uh, results. So we did this uh, build out trial example with the banking demo microservices into a traditional uh, JVM. Uh, so Quarko provides a head of time compilation and then uh, we boot use this. Uh, so the Quarkus benefit for developers as a cohesive, cohesive platform and with unified configuration, reactive and imperative model of development. And this is really uh, a, a must see, you have see this tool happening in five uh, programming modes for creating a new, a new API endpoint. And really you can interact with uh, other uh, requirements for uh, connecting to to uh, event streaming uh, and also moving your uh, logic business logic for this API into the serverless uh, mode using OpenShift serverless. So to wrap up, uh, the architecture evolution from service to microservices and to functions. Uh, it's really uh, evolution from the architecture perspective. We have talked about 
server serverless is the future in terms of uh, using uh, doing the code coding on more on your business requirements and the business logic and expanding less time on the configuration and the framework usage uh, this is really where the industry is moving forward and to fulfill, to have a full outreach of the cloud native approach it's not only a matter of getting a faster runtime for the microservices and scalability faster scaling this faster but also a mix of apis enterprise integration patterns data and events into different use cases and scenarios so you might want to to get a change data capture a service registry uh, serverless integration data as apis and so on so when we looked into the full API lifecycle and the stacks that we provide as part of the open banking sandbox by Rare, we see multiple and different types of in runtime platforms that we have uh, for and, and have available to, to develop the APIs, uh, but also to test, deploy, secure, manage, and, and, and control this full lifecycle this comes with a bundle of Red Hat products. Uh, Red Hat integration is a stack providing the full uh, feature of the integration and runtime technologies by Red Hat for uh, creating these uh, feature-proof uh, implementations. And building your application environment with Red Hat really means that you uh, can take benefits from the move open hybrid cloud environment with OpenShift uh, with the toolkit for Red Hat runtime integration and process automation as the application services uh, for creating your workloads and code ready as the workspace for development. So here uh, to, 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 to finalize, uh, here are the research. So you can, you, know, you may want to try to open OpenShift using uh, our learning portal implement OpenShift on the on the very uh, quick way for trying the Kubernetes uh, enterprise Kubernetes of OpenShift. Uh, the URL to get access to our collaboration workspace. So please provide feedback, open ticket, uh, interact, and also the GitHub repository for the source of the transactions demo. And you can find out more at Red Hat Financial Services. So thank you so much for your participation. And let me check if there's any question. I don't have more time, but I, you can go to the booth of Red Hat and I'll be able to, to take your questions over there. Thank you so much.